Hello, my name is Joe Winnett. I'm running KarenWare.com and picking up where Karen left off. I do so by permission of the owner of Karen's intellectual property, Terry Starr. Um, I'm recording this video as a go-along with the newsletter that I'm supposed to be writing right now. <laughs> uh, part of my problem with the newsletter is there's just no way that in one or two pages that I could express properly uh, this first uh, introduce myself and, and express my appreciation for Karen uh, and for her family and for this opportunity. So I wanted to record this video to go along with it. Uh, I met Karen in the 90s. She's one of the few people in the world <laughs> who had a delegated Class C network from the internet, which is a big deal. Um, right now, address space on the internet is is sub-delegated. So a large company like an internet service provider such as Comcast or Cox uh, Cable Television would be delegated a huge block of space and then they sub-delegate it to their customers. The reason that they started doing that is because the routing table in routers was getting so big that it was impossible to send certain traffic unless it was all bundled together into bigger blocks. Well, Karen in the early days of the internet had applied for and received delegation of 254 usable addresses on the internet. Her address space started with 199, I do remember. Uh, she had been paying for a leased line, a 56k leased line to an internet service provider in Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, which was very expensive, but it was the only way that she could route her subnet to her house, to her office, the secluded power tools workshop in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And she, at, at one time, of course, everybody was on dial-up, and she had seen an ad for a bonded dial-up uh, modem that would make two phone calls and bond the 256K lines together to be a speed faster than she was getting on her dedicated digital line. However, her internet service provider, which at the time was called WebZone in Tulsa, uh, didn't have a way or uh, couldn't engineer a way or wouldn't engineer a way to do a routed subnet over their dial-up network. And they told her by name that if anyone in town will do this, then it's gonna be Joe Winnett called Joe with Vigorous Technologies. And she did mention me in her newsletter, which was very kind. She called and introduced herself, and uh, <laughs> I, I was intrigued, and I thought it was exciting, and because, you know, I only had 40 phone lines instead of 900, <laughs> you know, and a few customers instead of a lot, and a lot of time instead of a little, uh, it was fun for me to go ahead and set that up and route another subnet um, in addition to the two little ones that I had been delegated for my internet service provider, which at one time was WebZone. They, those nice guys helped me uh, get started in 1996. Uh, so I routed it and she loved it and it was great and uh, I went out and helped set it up and <laughs> I I can honestly say that Karen Kenworthy was uh, one of the most, probably the most intelligent person that I have ever spoken to. Um, she was somebody that I could speak about any subject in any level of detail, and she could carry on a conversation about it. And I never left her office without learning something about a cool way to do something or uh, we, sh we sh traded a lot of emails over the years and became friends and uh, uh, she went ahead and, and when I was able to provide high-speed service out there she upgraded to high-speed service we put a T1 line in at her house which one day she had trouble with uh, uh, I detected she had some kind of spam sort of virus sort of thing in her office and went out and helped her solve that and helped her with some SQL problems um, and at one point uh, I just decided that it, yeah, what a great way to make a living, to have a newsletter, to have utility programs, which I've always, I've only sold a couple of programs to the general public and they were for some obscure stuff way back when I was in college. And I loved that feeling of being able to help someone out by creating a, a cool tool. And I liked her newsletters and I liked, you know, how she would explain things and tell a little story and then get into the details without getting too you know, into it, and it, it affected uh, how I teach people things, and it affected how I write things. Uh, and I, I found on her computer recently, when I, 
became custodian of all the intellectual property. Uh, but she had <laughs> she had a logo that I had sent her. I sent her an email saying, Karen, I just love the whole newsletter. You know, I want to be you when I grow up. And uh, I even made a logo that's a J instead of a K and called it Joe's Power Tools. And she had she has that logo on her computer. Um, I had, uh, my mom died in 2004 and I kind of was lost for a period of time and found myself homeless in Shawnee, Oklahoma and had said something about it on my blog and I was shocked to find out that Karen read my blog. Uh, she contacted me and actually helped me out it, and it wasn't the, it, it was very nice to be able to, you know, buy some food and pay, you know, a little bit to get out of there. And, and that was great, but it was it was just being supported by someone who, who until then was not a familial connection. She kind of became a, a surrogate mother for me, and I, I appreciated that and uh, loved Karen. Um, I found out Karen had died on the internet. I had been sending emails to her, been out of contact for a little while, and that was 2009. She helped me out. She died March 17, 2010. Uh, I had been sending emails and it was weird because she always had responded to my emails. Um, I knew her health wasn't great um, because she told me when we talked on the phone when I was in 2009 that uh, just some of the stuff that had been going on. But uh, uh, yeah, I found out when I read on her uh, website that Karen had passed away. Um, and I just figured that would be the end I would hear about Karen and Karen Ware. Uh, then, some years later, her website was hacked. Oh, I haven't introduced Terry. <laughs> Terry Starr, uh, one of Karen's very best friends is Michelle Starr. And when, uh, when Karen's health started kind of going downhill and she needed some help around the office to take care of just daily tasks, making CDs, shipping CDs, you know, running errands here and there. Um, Michelle uh, got with Karen's mom and they hired uh, Terry. And Terry uh, spent a lot of time there in the in the workshop and took care of Karen. And actually uh, nursed her back to health enough where Karen got to, she had three things on her bucket list. One of them was to see the Grand Canyon. And I I, I don't know if you, Karen was, was very overweight and had a hard time getting around, but uh, she had, you know, her health had gotten better and they had gotten her a, a you know, a roll around scooter and, and they had bought a van so that they could drive out and they planned, Karen planned, I've seen the itinerary, Karen planned down to the minute when they would reach the, you know, the ball of twine or whatever all of the sites were on the way. She picked out, she made a playlist and all the music that they would listen to on the way. Uh, Karen was an avid photographer and brought all our cameras and, and, uh, she did. She saw the Grand Canyon. She drove her little cart up to the edge and, and I guess was doing wheelies around. Took pictures, lots of cool pictures, uh, which I hope to get uh, permission to share with everybody one day. Uh, uh, well, anyway, when, when Karen got sicker and sicker, she, she uh, left in her will that, that the intellectual property of KarenWear.com was going to go to Terry. Uh, and it did. And uh, so what Terry did is after Karen's death, she continued to, you know, respond to correspondence and, and make CDs and send CDs. Uh, and then I got called with another friend of ours um, from town because her website had been hacked and he, he needed somebody to, to go through it and take all the stuff out and relaunch the site somehow and somewhere. And uh, I did that. <laughs> Uh, you know, it was in several steps, but somebody had had broken into her probably her uh, her newsletter mailer uh, interface and and had put advertisements on the website and had infected the downloads in some way and and I eventually relaunched it. I, I didn't relaunch it with the the same code because of, you know I was worried about um, hackability. I eventually relaunched the website as a PHP type copy of the website. April, uh, Microsoft released for Windows 10 the Creators Update, which changed some of the access control list orders from the that are inherited from the roots of the drive.
It made it where only installers that were trusted system installers, the new way of doing installations, were able to write to certain directories, including the user's configuration directory. Because of that, uh, programs like Directory Printer wouldn't install. Replicator would install, but it would kind of get hung up. If you're trying to replicate to a directory where all of the permissions were inherited from the root of the drive, it would sit there and you know, work for a long time, and then every file would fail after 20 or 30 seconds. And, and I was you know, seeing things on the internet of people like, oh, I've loved Replicator for years, and it's just the end. It's so, it's so sad that Karen died and someone put a fire under me. And there's a lot of paperwork involved in code signing. Um, but one, of the, one, things, one of the things that I wanted to be sure that, that wouldn't happen is that the code would be signed with my name. Uh, I, it, I'm just adamant that we can't sign anything with Karen Kenworthy's name. And in fact, Karen didn't sign anything with her name. She signed with a code signing certificate uh, as an organization, KarenWare.com. Well, these days, it's not so easy. And we couldn't just pay some money and renew that certificate because we're not Karen Kenworthy. I said by the end of the year that this CD needs to be released. And it, the, 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 those situations, especially with Replicator, had to be fixed. Uh, directory Printer is by far the most popular program. Replicator is the second most popular. I believe, but I can't prove it yet, that there are still half a million copies in use around the world. Of those two programs alone, just based on how many times I see it downloaded from the website and how many people go directly to it because of links that are on Microsoft's website, there's more than 5,000 links on Microsoft's website alone that even back to KarenWare.com, mainly Replicator and directly, Directory Printer. Uh, so I was racing against it, and then my computer updated in early November, and the problem had gone away. And it, I was testing, and the problem was just gone. It's like, oh, I fixed it. No, I, had, I hadn't fixed it. And in fact, the fix is really easy. It's just a matter of adding some create directory uh, statements so that, it's, so that the directory is created without scanning through the root of the drive. Um, because of the way Karen used the, the API to check if the directory was there and all that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, it was a pretty easy fix, but I couldn't sign him yet. And um, then all of a sudden Microsoft fixed it. I took some of the heat off and I was busy, you know, losing where I was living anyway. Uh, now I have moved to Bethel Acres, Oklahoma, which is near Shawnee. And things are back online. And, and, and instead of going through the... I've set up uh, here with a bank account and then an address. And I'm in the process of getting a Dun & Bradstreet listing. I, that was mailed in a couple weeks ago, and uh, as soon as that is in, I should be able to get a code signing certificate and start shipping CDs. I had picked uh, the first day of March, or the, the first day of spring, as a great release date. So instead of being the 2017 CD, it'll be the spring 2018 CD. Uh, Karen had you know generally seasonal releases. Um, uh, and I have all of her art and stuff like that, but uh, people have asked about, you know, when will these updated versions, mainly bug fixes now, uh, be re released on the website? Uh, the goal is to do it like Karen did it, at least for now, is that uh, CD customers and site license customers will receive the software through the, the automatic web update application that came on the CD, and then those updated versions of the applications will be released on the website on the next slide. Mary kind of got into a jam uh, where she's, you know, about a used cars worth down on money because she didn't understand the banking aspects of the credit card processing that was on Karen's system and never, never uh, finalized those transactions, never cleared the days or whatever. And by the time she had realized <laughs> what was going on, uh, Karen's bank account had been completely depleted. Uh, so we're kind of kind of in that. And oh, the reason I got access to all of this stuff and it came up is because uh, Terry needed to send some CDs, but the, the CD printer was out of ink. And I started looking, and it was going to cost $150 to put ink in the CD duplicator. And of course, these days, there are businesses that do these sorts of things. So. I'm sorry. I did, if you, when you receive a CD, I didn't personally touch it. <laughs> there's a there's a company out of New York that has a processing plant in Nevada that that prints those and mails them out, and it costs a ton less than buying an ink. 
so so uh, I guess that's all I wanted to say. Oh, why am I on in an Easter set? <laughs> I'm living. I'm renting. Karenware.com rents office slash Joe sleeping space back there in the corner of the house. Of uh, uh, and there's another home business here. SYI Studios. My best friend Stephanie uh, runs it here. She and her hubby Daryl um, had this place, and they've re they've re done this part of the of the house and it's got a really high ceiling and I'm, I'm planning on cutting in some pictures of her set here for Easter. There's two sets for Easter. Um, she would want me to say that she did not set up these little guys over here and she did not put the hat on this bunny over here. In fact, I, I arranged all of this. Um, what else? I think that's it. Anyway, thank you very much for your support and for your patience. I, sometimes I do feel like a purveyor of the fine vaporware, but really that's not the case. I am actually an excellent programmer. I, I, I programmed, the, the, these programs will eventually be changed to, to .NET, but uh, I was a VB6.0 programmer uh, for years and years and years. I started out as a C programmer, and uh, I've been programming since I was 11. I guess I started out in TRS-80 DOS, Tris DOS, at Radio Shack. <laughs> Uh, Commodore 64 was my first personal computer that I had in my house. Uh, what else? Oh, I was just going to mention that some of Karen's code is actually in C. Karen was an excellent C programmer as well as Visual Basic. And uh, she wrote like some of the DLLs that are there for the internet services. Um, she made uh, internet services and some of the checksum services such as MD5 and um, CRC checking and all that sort of thing. She wrote and see, and they're cool. I think that's it. Have a blessed day. Happy Easter. news something.